Not all vampires suck blood. Satanism represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Many people who walk the earth practice the fine art of making others feel responsible and even indebted to them without cause. Satanism observes these leeches in their true light. Physical vampires are individuals who drain others of their vital energy. This type of person can be found in all avenues of society. They fill no useful purpose in our lives and are neither love objects nor true friends. Yet we feel responsible to the psychic vampire without knowing why. <clears throat> if you think you may be the victim of such a person, there are a few simple rules which will help you form a decision. Is there a person you often call or visit, even though you really don't want to? Because you will know, you know you will feel guilty if you don't. <laughs> or do you find yourself constantly doing favors for one who doesn't come forward to ask? But hence, often the psychic vampire will use reverse psychology, saying, "Oh, I couldn't ask you to do that." Damn it! There we go. How the fuck do I do this? Fuck it. And you, in turn, insist upon doing it. The psychic vampire never demands anything of you. That would be far too presumptuous. They simply let their wishes be known in subtle ways, <laughs> which will prevent you, which will prevent them from being considered pests. They wouldn't think of imposing. And are always content to willingly accept their lot without the slightest complaint. Outwardly. Hold up. <laughs> ah. Their sins are not of commission, but of omission. It's what they don't say, not what they do say, that makes you feel you must account to them. They are much too crafty to make overt demands upon you, because they know you would resent it, and would have a tangible and legitimate reason for denying them. Uh. A large percentage of these people have special attributes which make their dependence upon you more feasible and much more effective. Many psychic vampires are invalids, or pretend to be, or are mentally or emotionally disturbed. Others might feign ignorance or incompetence, so you will, out of pity, or more often, exasperation, do things for them. The traditional way to banish a demon or elemental is to recognize it for what it is and exercise it. Recognition of these modern-day demons and their methods is the only antidote for their devastating hold over you. Most people accept those these passively vicious individuals at face value only because their insidious maneuvers have never been pointed out to them. They merely accept these poor souls as being less fortunate than themselves and feel they must help them however they can. It's this misdirected sense of responsibility (parentheses) or unfounded sense of guilt (parentheses) which nurse which which nourishes well the altruisms upon which these parasites feast. The psychic vampire is allowed to exist because he cleverly chooses conscientious, responsible people for his victims, people with great dedication to their moral obligation. In some cases, we are, vampire, we are vampirized by groups of people as well as individuals. Every fundraising organization, be it a charitable foundation, community council, religious or fraternal association, etc., 
carefully selects a person who is adept at making others feel guilty for its chairman or coordinator. It is the job of this chairman to intimidate us into opening first our hearts and then our wallets to the recipient to the recipient of their goodwill, never mentioning that in many cases their time is not unselfishly donated, but that they are drawing a far salary, a fat salary for their noble deed. They are masters at playing upon the sympathy and consideration of responsible people. How often we see little children who have been sent forth by these self-righteous faggons to painlessly extract donations from the kindly. Who can resist the innocent charm of a child? Pink. There are, of course, people who are not happy unless they are giving, but many of us do not fit into this category. Unfortunately, we are often put upon us. We are often put upon to do things we do not genuinely feel should be required of us. A conscientious person finds it very difficult to decide between voluntary and imposed charity. He wants to do what is right and just and finds it perplexing trying to decide exactly who he should help and what degree of aid should rightfully be expected of him. Uh. Each person must decide for himself what his obligations are to his respective friends, family, and community before donating his time and money to those outside his immediate family and close circle of friends. He must decide what he can afford without depriving those closest to him. By taking these things into consideration, he must be certain <sighs> to include himself among those who mean most to him. You must carefully evaluate the validity of the request and the personality or motives of the person asking it of you. It is extremely difficult for a person to learn to say no when all his life he has said yes. But unless he wants to be constantly taken advantage of, he must learn to say no. What circumstances justify doing so? If you allow them, psychic vampires will gradually infiltrate your everyday life until you have no privacy left, and your constant feeling of concern for them will deplete you of all ambition. Yeah. <laughs> A psychic vampire will always select a person who is relatively content and satisfied with his life. A person who is happily married, pleased with his job, and generally well adjusted to the world around him to feed upon. The very fact that the psychic vampire chooses to victimize a happy person shows that he is lacking all the things his victim has. He will do everything he can to stir up trouble, disharmony between his victim and those people he holds dear. Let me say that one more time. He will do everything he can to stir up trouble and disharmony between his victim and the people he holds dear. Therefore, be wary of anyone who seems to have no real friends and no apparent interest in life except you. He will usually tell you he is very selective in his choice of friends or doesn't make friends easily because of the high standards he sets for his companions. Parentheses, to acquire and keep friends, one must be willing to give of himself something of which the psychic vampire is incapable. End parentheses. But he will hasten to add you, to add that you fulfill every requirement and are truly an outstanding exception among men. You are one of the very few worthy of his friendship. 
Lest you confuse desperate love, which is a very selfish thing, with psychic vampirism, the vast difference between the two must be clarified. The only way to determine if you are being vampirized is the way what you give the person compared to what they give you in return. You may at times become annoyed by the obligations put upon you by a loved one, a close friend, or even an employer. But before you label them psychic vampires, you must ask yourself, what am I getting in return? If your spouse or lover insists that you call them frequently, but you also require them to account to you for their time spent away from you, you must realize that this is a give-and-take situation. Or if a friend is in the habit of calling upon you for help at, in, at inopportune moments, but you similarly depend upon them to give your immediate needs priority, you must regard it as a fair exchange. If your employer asks you to do a little more than is normally expected of you in your particular position, but will overlook occasional tardiness or will give you time off when you need it, you certainly have no cause for complaint and need not feel he is taking advantage of you. You are, however, being vampirized. If you are incessantly called upon or expected to do favors for someone who, when you need a favor, always happens to have other pressing obligations. Many psychic vampires will give you material things for the express purpose of making you feel you owe them something in return, thereby binding you to them. The difference between your giving and theirs is that your return payment must come in a non-material form. <laughs> they want you to feel obligated to them and would be very disappointed and even resentful if you attempted to repay them with material objects. In essence, you have sold your soul to them. And they'll constantly remind you of your duty to them by not reminding you. <laughs> oh, dear reader. Being purely satanic, the only way to deal with a psychic vampire is to play dumb <laughs> and act as though they are genuinely altruistic and really expect nothing in return. Teach them a lesson by graciously taking what they give you, thinking them loudly enough for all, think, thanking them loudly enough for all to hear, and walking away. In this way, you come out the victor. What can they say? And when you are inevitably, inevitably expected to repay their generosity, fuck, this is the hard part. You say no, but again, graciously. When they feel you falling from their clutches, two things will happen. First, they will act crushed. Hoping your old feeling of duty and sympathy will return, and when, and if it doesn't, they will show their true colors and will become angry and vindictive. Once you have moved them to this point, you can play the role of the injured party. After all, you've done nothing wrong. You just happen to have had pressing obligations. When they needed you, and since nothing was expected in return for their gifts, there should be no hard feeling. <laughs> Generally, the psychic vampire will realize his methods have been discovered <laughs> and will not press the issue. He will not continue to waste his time with you, but will move on to his next unsuspecting victim. There are times, however, when the psychic vampire will not release his hold on his hold so easily and will do everything possible to torment you. They have plenty of time for this, because when once rejected, they will neglect all else. The little else they have, that is. To devote that every waking moment to planning the revenge to which they feel they are, they are entitled. For this reason, it is best to avoid a relationship with this kind of person in the first place. Their adulation and dependence upon you may at first be very flattering, 
and their material gifts very attractive, but you will eventually find yourself paying for them many times over. Don't waste your time with people who will ultimately destroy you, but concentrate instead on those who will appreciate your responsibility to them, and likewise feel responsible to you. And if you, and if you are a psychic vampire, take heed. Beware of the Satanist. He is ready and willing to gleefully drive the proverbial stake through your heart.